In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the differences we notice amongst language learners in language classrooms, and that is level. Knowledge of what constitutes different language levels, the abilities and the language that we teach at these levels, comes with experience. But I want to give you a broad overview and get you thinking about this very important topic. Different schools and different organizations use different systems of classification for language level. Most of them revolve around three basic levels, and that is beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, the system I'm going to talk about today is a broad five-level system, and to inform that, I'm going to use uh, two different systems of classification used by two different organizations. One of those is from my graduate school alma mater, Colorado State University, and their uh, level system appropriately called language levels. And the other comes from TESOL, which is the Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages, and their five levels of language proficiency. Starting at the lowest level, what we might call level one, CSU calls true beginner and TESOL calls starting, we have learners that have limited or no understanding, um, limited or no communicative ability. Uh, their, their utterances are usually limited to a single word or one to three words, and they construct meaning through gestures and by interpreting um, visuals and graphs and things more than, than the words. At this level, you're going to be teaching very basic vocabulary, um, very basic sentence construction, nouns, verbs, adjectives, subject, verb, object, and subject, verb agreement. Level two would be what CSU calls beginner and what TESOL calls emerging. At this level, they're using some vocabulary and grammar, but very simple. Um, they're able to understand short phrases and questions, and they're able to give short answers. They're still producing a lot of basic errors, a lot of systematic errors, and their communication is highly hindered by these errors. At this beginner level, you're going to be teaching the simple tenses, uh, past, present and future, as well as things like modal verbs, and maybe moving into a slightly higher level of vocabulary. Level three would be what uh, CSU calls low intermediate and TESOL calls developing. And at this level, students are generally able to interact and communicate, but still making numerous errors. They're um, able to understand a bit more complex speech. They generally need uh, still need repetition, both in um, oral input as well as in reading. They need to read things multiple times to understand them. At this developing level, we're teaching um, maybe expanding beyond simple sentences into compound and complex sentences, um, and we're looking at the different aspects of grammar, the continuous progressive aspect, and maybe even moving into the present perfect a little bit. Level four would be what CSU calls high intermediate and TESOL calls expanding, and at this level, uh, students generally have an adequate level of language for most of their day-to-day -day interactions. They still have difficulty when dealing in less familiar settings uh, or more academic or more formal settings. They generally can converse with a high level of fluency um, and using more complex grammar. So uh, at this level, you're going to be teaching them to expand their sentences into longer sentences, elaborating on their ideas, teaching some grammar points like uh, clauses, adjective and adverb clauses, noun clauses, as well as maybe the passive voice uh, and things like reported speech. Finally, the highest level, level five, CSU calls that advanced, TESOL calls that bridging. Um, at this level, the, the learners are near proficient. Um, they still make occasional errors, as adult learners will, um, always will, but generally that doesn't hinder their communication. At this level, you're going to be focusing more on whatever they specifically need English for. Um, you're going to be helping them create extended presentations or writing academic papers, maybe learning technical vocabulary within their job. Um, you're also helping them with colloquialisms and idioms and things that will help them sound more like a native speaker and, and, and totally understand everything that native speakers say. So that is a general five-level overview of language levels. Uh, I should point out that if you're interested in teaching in Europe in the future, you would look into something called the Common European Framework for Reference of Languages, and that's a six-level system that's being adopted across all of, of England, um, Europe. And so I encourage you to look into that and look into uh, many different systems as you start to explore different levels of language.